Hi, this is the fourth part of the modulator tutorial series and today I'll introduce you to the next powerful modulator called the envelope. Also, some practical examples will be given. For those who are familiar with synthesizers, this material is going to be very easy to grasp. For those who face the conception of an envelope for the first time, I can tell you that the envelope is a modulating signal with a signed shape intended for a parameter's control. Unlike the follower, which we discussed in the previous tutorial, the envelope has a fixed shape. Another feature, putting this modulator aside, is it needs a trigger or event to start running. All other modulators presented in this series don't need that. After completion of the envelope, a modulation stops and it won't start again until a new event is received. Let's have a look at the modulators window. We can see familiar panels like the parameters, level, detector, bandpass filter and projection. For more information on these panels, please go to the previous parts of this series. You'll also remember what the LFO modulation is for. The new panel, which we're going to spend most of the time in this part, is the ADSR. In the top left corner, we find two buttons switching between two kinds of events, MIDI and audio, that will be used as the trigger to start the envelope. Which one to choose? Generally, working with MIDI messages is simpler because we don't need to worry about the detector's settings. For example, here I use note on messages to trigger the envelope. What I did is this. I put M Audio Dynamic EQ on the audio track. Next, I pointed the envelope modulator to the low pass filters cut frequency parameter. I sent MIDI tracks output into the M Audio Dynamic EQ's MIDI input. And now I am ready to tune the envelope modulator. Let's study the ADSR panel. What can we see here? First, a graphical presentation of the envelope itself. And second, the envelope's parameters. To demonstrate their work, I'm going to use this synth pad and M Audio Dynamic EQ's low pass filter. I'll start from the basic parameters. After receiving the MIDI on message from the MIDI track, the envelope enters into the attack stage, during which the modulating signal reaches its maximum starting from zero. As soon as the MIDI off message arrives, the envelope will switch to the release phase. Now, the modulation comes down from its maximum to zero. However, after the attack stage is finished, the modulation doesn't have to stay in its maximum all the time. It can be an intermediate between the maximum and zero. And this is when we need the sustain parameter. If I set it in the middle, then the modulating signal will diminish to that value after ending the attack stage. However, you've noticed, of course, that the transition from the attack to sustain phase sounds abrupt. To fix that, we use the decay parameter. Those were the basic parameters that the majority of envelopes possess. But melder production wouldn't be melder production if it gives us only generally known stuff. And the first not so known parameter is the delay. As the name suggests, it delays the envelope's action for the time determined here. The hold is an extra stage between the attack and decay. It controls how long the peak modulation holds for. But again, to make things even more interesting, it has its own level parameter setting the final value. The attack, decay and release parameters have extra controllers that change their shape.
Unlike in synthesizers, this envelope will run up to the sustain stage no matter how long a note lasts. For example, if the note is a 1 16 and the cumulative length of the attack, hold and decay stages is one bar, the envelope will run one bar anyway and then will enter the release stage. For a synth-like envelope, click on the immediate release button. Now, the envelope will last as long as the note, plus the release stage, of course. The length of the envelope stages can be quantized to the closest note, or in other words, synchronized to tempo. To get that, click on the sync button and in pop-up menu, select the note you like. Now, when I'm changing the attack parameter, for instance, you can see that its actual value changes by one straight note step. Finally, there's a built-in tremolo effect. Its main controllers are right here. However, for in-depth editing, you'll need to click on this button. A fleeting glance at it reveals a fully functional, normal modulator. I won't stop on each parameter again. You can find their detailed description in the first part of this series. Here, I'll only note new features. By default, the tremolo works during the envelope sustain phase. However, if you wish to have it earlier, select the Tremolo Starts in Decay Stage option. Now, the Tremolo will work during both the Decay and Sustain stages. You can also extend the Tremolo's action by including the Release part of the envelope. Simply, click on the Tremolo Continues in Release Stage option. The random initial phase mode enforce the tremolo to start with a different phase every time the envelope runs. The follow sustain level option when on changes the depth of the tremolo as a function of the level of the sustain. That is, the lower the sustain stages level, the lower the tremolo's depth. It helps to keep the tremolo shape original, which otherwise can get clipped if this option is off. See what happens to the tremolo shape if I lower the sustain with this option off. The shape gets clipped at the bottom, and now with this option on. However, even with this option, the tremolo can get clipped at the top when the sustain is higher than minus six decibels. To avoid that, you still must adjust the depth. The fade in parameter sets the time during which the tremolo reaches its full depth. That is, it doesn't start instantly, but gets introduced gradually. You may ask, what if I want the tremolo for the entire envelope? In that case, simply add the LFO modulation, not tremolo. Two words about the action on, off modes. They set the envelope's reaction to an event. The start single is relevant to MIDI notes, so when played legato, only the first one is considered as a trigger. The start action is a normal mode when every event, MIDI or audio, activates the envelope. Moreover, every new envelope starts from the value of the previous one at the moment of receiving a new event. Thus, a smooth transition is provided. Unlike the start, the start forced launches the envelope from zero every time. The ignore action disregards an event. Finally, let's go through the examples you heard at the beginning of this tutorial. The first track is a bass drum. The sample is pretty basic. But what makes the sound interesting is a modulated reverb, kind of a gate effect. Here, I use two modulators. 
the first one for the dry wet controller and the second one for EQ bands. Because I'm dealing with a single sample whose waveform has a sharp front, I can easily use it as a trigger for the envelope. If I was working with a drum loop, the task would be harder. I would have to find a way to start the envelope on a particular drum hit. If you have faced such a problem, try to employ a side chain equaliser. But let's start with some simple things. I use the audio mode, which means the first thing I must tune is the detector. I want the envelope to start running as soon as the bass drum hits. In order to get that, my detector must be very fast. That's why I set the attack and hold to zero and the release to 10 milliseconds. The RMS could be between zero and five milliseconds. Next parameters to set are the threshold on off. They're equivalent to note on off messages in MIDI mode. I set the threshold on at a low level to capture the very beginning of the hit. The threshold off position is not that important, as long as it's lower than the threshold on, because the envelope will go through the attack, hold and decay stages anyway, and these three parameters are enough to build the envelope I want. The sustain to silence. I also wanted the gate effect to be of a different length for different hits. To achieve that, I pointed the hold as a multi-parameter and used VST automation to change it along the track. Now to the equaliser. Here, the first band's frequency and quality and the second band's gain are controlled by another envelope modulator. The logic and settings are very similar to the ones used for the first modulator. I must probably mention that the envelope settings as such are irrelevant because they'll be defined by your taste. What is important is rather a methodology I use here. Back to examples. For a rim shot, I apply the M multiband delay. Here I wanted two delays to change their times from 1 16th to 1 8th note after every hit. Besides, one delay goes from 1 16th to 1 8th and another one from 1 8th to 1 16th. I also wanted to have the first delay spacious, so I modulated its right offset. To make things even more interesting, I automated the sustain through VST modulation. The baseline goes through M Wobbler because this part was played legato, that is, the sound doesn't have distinctive transients that could be used as audio triggers. I used MIDI notes to start an envelope. Speaking on the envelope, in this example, I used a custom shape, the feature we haven't talked about yet. To activate it, click on the custom shape button located here. Now you can utilize all the power of Melder Productions Shape Editor to draw any shape you like. I used it in the release stage. For the synth stabs, I applied M Auto Dynamic EQ's low pass filter. Here, I used the tremolo in the release stage. I think I've covered everything in the envelope modulator. Interestingly, now when we know the normal and envelope modulators, it seems that they both can give us pretty much the same result. But this is rather because I use loop-based music in both examples. If you're dealing with something non-recurring, something with tempo deviation, applying the normal modulator can be a wrong choice. Try the envelope instead and vice versa. If it's a loop-based composition, you may find that making modulation waveforms in the normal modulator is easier. That's all for now. Happy modulating.